G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, a little while back I made up a boiler and uh, hooked up to my little wobbler steam engine and the whole thing was a great success, it worked out really good. And I had to put a pressure release valve on the boiler, you know, I don't want to blow myself up. And I finished up, I put a little one on that I had from a tiny little air compressor and it works really well, it doesn't look out of place. But at the time, I, I got this plan off the internet, this design, and I was considering making it. And then I did, and I thought, oh, it's not going to be much smaller than what I'm putting on there. Anyway, I'm waiting for that little um, sumo lathe to come through, so I've got a bit of time to kill. And the weather's as wild as hell outside, blowing a gale. And I thought, I'll have a crack at making one of these. This is so simple. And... I might just vary a little bit. So that's what I've done. And the one I've made is 8mm diameter and the thread is 5mm, whereas theirs is 6mm and 10mm, so mine's smaller again. And to do this, I just use the, the old Shorblin. I'll give, a, give you a look at the old Shorblin. It's a bit dirty at the moment. Well, there she is in all her glory, and it's a great old machine, not bad for 1930s. And of course, you know, as, I, as you know, for any regular viewers know, I've got this in an absolute wreck. I only paid 350 bucks for it, and then I had to spend 18 months getting it sorted out, reworking all the, all the dovetails, scraping them by hand, the whole bit. Anyway, it's good for this sort of work. Once again, collets are your friend. If you ever do this sort of work, I just couldn't do it without collets. I mean, you're just going to have a hell of a job otherwise. So collets are your friend. And this sort of chuck is the way to go because it's got feed through. You can feed right through the spindle. Whereas the collet chucks that have got a Morse taper, you can't feed through because the Morse taper's filling up the spindle, you know. Anyway, enough of that. There's the old girl, and it shows that it's getting plenty of use. And the drive belts are good and dirty. So, yeah, this isn't a decoration model like a lot of them on the internet that obviously never see any sort of work at all from what I can gather. Squeaky clean. Okay, let's go back and have a look at the, uh, the pressure valve. So here's the diagram and here's the blow-off valve. How'd that grab you? I mean, okay, th this is only 10 mil. I mean, it looks huge in the diagram, of course the schematic. And this one's an 8mm and I've varied it a bit and it just uses a, uh, a cap head screw to tension the spring so that's a cap head screw now. Uh, it's 5mm uh, and it's just drilled right through for the pressure relief and down here we have a 5mm bolt which has been drilled through and on the inside we've got a smaller ball than I've used. I've used a really small one. And I've milled into the end to get a square shoulder and then I've dressed that with a taper tip drill on it and it seals perfectly. It works really good. So I'll crack it open and show you the components. I mean these are so easy to make. I nailed it. It looks pretty now, I know. But I nailed it so I could screw it in. You've got lock nuts to lock, it, lock everything up and your adjuster included because you know it could be vibration so I'll crack it open and show you what's in there okay we'll take it apart and you can see what's inside it's very simple and you could scale this up to make a big one you know a big version for a bigger air compressor if you wanted to they all work on a similar principle but anyway we'll take it apart so that's our 5mm bolt and lock nut that's the spring out of a buyer or something small and a ball bit, little ball bearing. That's your seal. And on the bottom, this is where we've drilled right through, milled it, and then just put a very slight angle on the inside of the drill hole because when you mill it, that edge is going to be rough. It's going to be, it won't seal properly. You have to just run a 
a slightly uh, larger drill just into it just to clean up the edge and be good to go. So they're the only bits in the whole thing. Pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, it took me about a couple of hours to make it, you know, because a bit of mucking around, but dead simple. So when I put it together, I'll lock tight the bottom thread in because it won't need to come out again. And then I'll just uh, have the top so you can open it up if you have to. And that's all there is to it. So does it work? Well, of course it works. Otherwise I wouldn't show it to you. I'll hook it up the air compressor and we'll uh, to an airline and we'll, we'll try it out. So here's the, the little jigger. We'll turn up the regulator. You can hear it blowing off. And I can hope undo it a bit. And it's uh, it'll blow off even earlier. I'll screw it in further and uh, we'll go higher. There it is, it's blowing off at a much higher pressure. So there you go, you can set it up whatever you want. And it's dead easy to make. Pretty cool, eh? So what do you need to make this? Well, what you need is a cheap tap and die set, like that. That's my old set I've had for like 30 years. And as I said earlier, Collets are your friend. If you've got a metal lathe and you want to do small fine work, collets are your friend. They will make life so much easier. You can grip stuff and it won't slip, it won't mark, it won't tear it up. You can go down to the smallest of sizes. They go down to two mil. And if you've got a small lathe or a large lathe that will take collets, you put on a bolt up collet chuck or whatever, you can do this sort of work piss easy. It's so easy. And of course you've got to have ball bearings. If you haven't got ball bearings, well you're in big trouble. And this is my ball bearing collection. I just saved them, saved them over the years and there's all sorts of sizes there. Put a bit of uh, oil in there to stop them from rusting. And you're good to go. I mean in here this will be exposed to steam but you should have lube in your water so it shouldn't rust it should be okay there should be a certain amount of oil to give everything in good shape there you go that's my latest that's my latest little uh, project turned out great now have i got any news on the lathe a 7x12 that I'm going to review, yes. I signed the paperwork, the deal's gone through, they're going to send me one. Of course, they don't work on weekends, so they're shipping it out uh, probably today. The paperwork went through yesterday on Monday, so I should get it as it's coming from Australia. I should get it within a couple of days, probably, probably Wednesday, hopefully. Then we'll get into it. Also, I've had people ask me, where is the... Um, distribution centre in Canada. Uh, I've got information on that. It's in Vancouver. So Vancouver in Canada, Melbourne in Australia. So stay tuned. It should be, uh, it should be interesting. I had a lot of interest in this video. Okay, well that's it for me. We'll uh, wait for the lathe and see how it shapes up. See you next time. Cheers.